Hey there, math aces, and welcome to Mr. Ace Math. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to convert improper fractions into mixed numbers. Let's start with the lesson breakdown. And just so you know, this exact lesson breakdown is also in the description below with timestamps to each part of the lesson. Feel free to click on the part of the video that you need most. First, we'll start with a brief model of whole numbers and improper fractions to have a general understanding of why this works. But if you want to learn just about how to actually convert from improper fractions into mixed numbers, I recommend starting with example one, because examples one, two, and three give you a step-by-step -step process of how to do it. After those three examples, we'll have the pause and practice where you'll get a chance to try some questions of your own. After that, the answers will be revealed, followed by the reflection where we review everything we learned from this lesson. But in order to do well, you need to make sure you have the following skills. First, you should have a general understanding of what mixed numbers are, what they look like really, that they have a whole number and a fraction next to them. You should know about fractions, basically that the top is called the numerator and the bottom is called the denominator. You should be comfortable with fractions, more specifically that the top is called the numerator and the bottom is called the denominator. Improper fractions and why they're called improper, as well as long division and subtraction. So make sure you know those and let's get started. So let's start with this model that relates mixed numbers to improper fractions. You'll notice that the model that I have for mixed numbers and improper fractions is exactly the same because mixed numbers and improper fractions do exactly the same thing. They represent values that are more than one whole. Mixed numbers do it using a whole number and a fraction together. So in this model, we have three circles. In each of the three circles, is cut into eight equal pieces. This first circle has everything filled. So we could call that one whole circle. The second circle is exactly the same. All eight of the pieces are filled. So that's another whole circle. So, so far we have two whole circles. And we have a whole number two that represents the two whole circles that we have. But this circle is not a completely filled circle. Out of the eight possible total pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there are only three that are filled. So we would show that using the fraction three over eight. So in order to show this using mixed numbers, we would have to add our whole number and our fraction together. But that's actually not as bad as it sounds. And the reason why is because when you're adding a whole number and a fraction, you just put them together. So the mixed number that shows this model is two and three over eight, or two and three eighths. Now let's talk about the improper fraction. With improper fractions, we don't use whole numbers at all. We only use fractions. This here is a circle that's cut up into eight pieces. And of those eight pieces, all eight of them are filled. And so out of eight, being that eight are filled, we would show it using the fraction eight over eight. And for this circle, we would do the same exact thing because out of eight total pieces, all eight are filled. So we'll show this circle using the fraction eight over eight. And this one here, out of eight total possible slices, only three are filled. So we would show that using the fraction, what do you think? If you said three over eight, you're absolutely right. Now we have to add everything together. And if you know about how to add like fractions, you would just add the numerators together because the bottom is the same. 
but I want to focus on the model. Because remember, each of these pieces is an eighth. That's one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and eight eighths. This is eight eighths. So here we would have eight pieces. And here we would have eight pieces. But here we don't have eight pieces. We only have three pieces. So we've got the eight slices here plus the eight slices here. So we've got eight plus eight is 16, 17, 18, 19 eighths. Because remember, each of these pieces is an eighth. So the improper fraction to show this would be 19 eighths. And just a reminder, it's called an improper fraction because proper fractions represent a value less than one whole. This represents a value more than one whole. And you can always tell you have an improper fraction because the numerator is always bigger than the denominator. Now let's go into our first example so we can go over a step by step how to convert from improper fractions to mixed numbers. So let's say we're starting with the fraction 21 over 8. There are three steps to convert from improper fractions to mixed numbers. Step number one is to divide the numerator by the denominator to get the whole number. That sounds like a lot of parts, so let's break it down step by step. We're dividing the numerator, 21, by the denominator, which is 8. Before we can actually divide, we should put it in long division notation. And that will look like this, where the top goes inside the long division notation and the bottom stays outside. So now we can actually divide. And how many times does 8 go into 21 without going over? Well, that would be 2 times. 2 times 8 is... 16. When we subtract 21 minus 16, we get 5. This 2 is the whole number in our mixed number because 8 can go into 21 two whole times. So let's write that as the big whole number in our mixed number. Now we can go to step 2, which is to make the remainder the numerator. So this remainder of 5 is going to be the numerator in our fraction. So we'll make it small and next to the 2 on the top. And step 3 is to keep the denominator the same. Remember that the denominator is 8. So we're going to keep that the same and place it right under the 5. And just like that, we're done. We can say the improper fraction 21 eighths is equivalent to the mixed number 2 and 5 eighths. Let's go to our next example. Here we've got 42 over 5. Step 1 is to divide the numerator by the denominator to get the whole number. The numerator is 42 and the denominator is 5. So let's make sure we set up our long division notation and place the numerator inside and keep the denominator outside. How many times can 5 go into 42? Well, that's 8. So we'll bring the 8 right on top of the long division notation, right here. And 8 times 5 is 40. And we'll place that 40 under the 42 and subtract. When we subtract 42 minus 40, that gives us 2. And so now we're done with the long division. And we can start writing our mixed number. To do that, remember that the number on top is going to be the whole number. So let's write that nice and big down here. Next, 
we should remember that the remainder is going to be the numerator. So let's put the two next to the eight and a little bit high because it's going to be the top of our fraction. And step three is to keep the denominator the same. Our denominator was five. So we're gonna put five right under two. And just like that, we have our whole number and fraction and we are done. And because we started with the improper fraction, 42 over five, we can say that the improper fraction 42 over five is equal to the mixed number eight and two fifths. Let's get to our last example. Here we've got 33 over seven. Step one is to divide the numerator, which is 33, by the denominator, which is seven. Let's set up our long division, making sure we put 33 inside the long division symbol. And how many times can seven go into 33? That would be four times, because four times seven is 28. We'll take that 28 and put it under 33. When we subtract 33 minus 28, we get five. So now that we're done with our long division, we have everything we need to make our mixed number. The whole number for the mixed number is the result of our division, which is four. So we'll write that nice and big down here. And again, we're writing it bigger because that's going to be the whole number for our mixed number. Next, the remainder is going to be the numerator. So that means our five is going to be the numerator and we'll write it small and towards the top of the four, like this. And we're writing it like this because we still have to put our denominator, which is going to be exactly the same as when we started. Our denominator was seven. So it's going to stay seven. And just like that, we've got our mixed number. And so we can say that the improper fraction 33 over seven is equivalent to the mixed number four and five sevenths. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. Hit the pause button and try these six questions. Once you're done, hit the play button to see if your answers are correct. Ready, set, go. So let's take a look at our answers. Number one is 10 and 1 eighth. Number two is three and two ninths. Number three is seven and three tenths. Number four is five and three fourths. Number five is eight and one sixth. And number six is six and one half. So how'd you do math aces? If you got everything right, I want you to write Pause and Practice Pro in the comments. And don't forget to share this with a friend. So what did we learn today? Improper fractions are called improper because they have a value greater than one. And that makes them improper because fractions normally have values less than one. The numerator of an improper fraction is greater than the denominator. To convert from an improper fraction to a mixed number, there are blank steps. Well, there are three steps. The three steps to convert from an improper fraction to a mixed number are one, divide the numerator by the denominator. 
And this gives you the whole number in your mixed number. Number two, make the remainder the numerator. And three, to keep the denominator the same. All right, math faces, there you have it. Everything you need to know about how to convert from improper fractions to mixed numbers. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in math class. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Questions? Comments? Leave them down below. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.